Joining me right now, Thomas Smales with us, CEO of FE International. So it felt good when we started to get some IPOs back in the market. We had Arm, we had Instacart, we had Clavio here. Um, a lot of action, but what's really going on in your mind? So I think firstly, the, the fact the IPOs have been happening again and it's been slow for a couple of years is great for everyone's confidence. Whether you're thinking about M&A or going public, right. there's more optionality that perhaps didn't exist before. Um, our team at FE International have worked on over 1,500 transactions. And what we've seen is this year, there's a lot more confidence coming back in the market that wasn't there a couple of years ago. I think firstly, you've got the IPOs that we mentioned. You've got interest rates. While they have been increasing, they've been relatively stable recently. And then you've also got the third factor, which is private equity firms in the US have over $4 trillion of dry powder. They need to deploy that capital. So all we've really been seeing is the combination of that three factors right. is causing people to want to do deals. So it's interesting because August, September, October were not particularly good months in the market. And there was a feeling that the market environment was better to maybe when you were holding off on the IPO which market, which really dried up last year, that maybe now was the time to come back in. You're also sort of taking a look as you look at these many, many deals that happen. You're forecasting more M&A activity. You're using uh, Cisco with Splunk as maybe a barometer. Tell me how so. Yeah, I think just a, a big part of it is just the confidence coming back into the market. So when big companies are doing M&A, it signals to smaller companies or maybe even their competitors that they should also be doing deals. Over the last few years, we've primarily seen private equity firms doing deals, but now there's more public companies and larger strategic companies who want to do, want to do deals as well. So when you combine the competitiveness of the public companies and the private equity firms who want to do deals, that's more demand and more deals that will naturally happen. I mean, we've seen a lot of uh, private equity deals also because um, credit conditions have tightened and private equity and venture capitalists have been sort of a very popular road. Do you expect that um, to continue for private equity? Yeah, I think so. If you look at the data over the last 20 years, there's been about an eight times increase in the amount of dry powder available, so mm -hmm. capital that needs to be deployed. So that $4 trillion needs to go somewhere. It either gets deployed into acquisitions or it gets returned to investors. So all the factors we can see, we're speaking to thousands of private equity firms every month. They're telling us they want to do deals. We're seeing more activity. Um, so I think that's just only going to continue. I mean, what's the takeaway here? Does this mean I should buy a lot of the new growth tech companies in hopes that they get taken over and have this big, gigantic move on the stock? Well, I think public companies and like high growth companies are one thing, but a lot of the M&A activity that happens are kind of older, slower growth profitable businesses, which are not necessarily exciting. We're not necessarily going to find them on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange, but they're interesting to investors because they continue to kick off cash flow year after year. So a lot of the activity is happening on companies that people have never heard of. So recently we closed a transaction called Positive Psychology, eight-figure deal. Most people would never have heard of that, that business, but it was profitable. It was sustaining a team of people and it was attractive to a private equity firm who'd raised about a billion dollars. So there's lots of those deals happening as well that people generally don't hear about. Right, understood. And as big tech is on the prowl, as you say, and talk about a, a deal as an example right there, how about the transition of big tech? Because you said a lot of these companies that were older have had to transition, right? Whether they're going from good old PCs to cloud and data management and AI, right? And AI really plays a factor here, right? Why? I mean, there's an entire new generation of AI companies, and I think investors in general, whether you consider it a buzzword or the actual future of the industry, companies are investing more and more in AI, whether they're a 50-year-old business that never touched AI before, or they're a brand new startup. So more and more investors are interested in AI. AI. More and more founders are launching businesses built on AI. So I think if you're ignoring it, you're probably making a mistake, and I think in general, more deals are just going to continue to happen. So we've seen, at the moment, a nine-figure transaction in the AI space right. we're working on at the moment. Two years ago, that would not have happened because 
people are just not building companies in that industry. So are there any big companies right now that you know of that are actively looking for acquisitions to have this kind of growth? Well, I think most of the public companies out there are definitely getting more active again. So we speak to companies like Microsoft, Shopify, all of the companies that you would hear of day in, day out on the news. They're always yeah. actively looking to make acquisitions. And we talk a bit about AI companies like Microsoft are consistently investing yeah. in AI themselves. And M&A is a good way to acquire IP or acquire businesses without having to build it yourself. Mm -hmm. So the transaction we're working on nine figures is relatively small for a company like Microsoft, but it might significantly accelerate their um, ability to compete in the AI space. Yeah, you said ed tech companies also in demand. Is, uh, tell us about that. So I think the big thing with ed tech is that's really the where the transition from offline, so traditionally education was delivered in the classroom. Right. But during COVID, there was an acceleration more and more online. So sure. now it's, it's video, it can be, in courses that were previously delivered in classroom, we're now getting that online. It can be in writing, a real combination of different materials. So what we've seen is that a lot of businesses in that space have pivoted from the old school offline into yeah. delivering their materials online. Yeah. And investors love that because it's a, it's a space that's never going away. People yeah. always want to invest in education and now it's being delivered in a more accessible medium. So those are the hot areas, the AI, ed tech, the large companies that are, are searching for these acquisitions. And in the meantime, I'm sure there's a lot that's being left in the dust. We'll save that conversation for another day. That's Thomas it. Smale, thank you so much. Nice to see you. Appreciate you this much. and the insight and research that your company does, CEO of FE International.